he is so blind he says okay i'll go on i ask my priest i'll go on i ask my pastor if what you are telling me is true my pastor went to seminary my pastor went to college my pastor has a second degree in religion and theology comparative religion my pastor knows everything okay i'll go and ask him and he goes to the pastor the shepherd the leader the one that is to show the way to heaven and said i met somebody and they're saying we must repent i must turn away from every sin and believe on the lord jesus christ and we will be saved and after we are saved we will not continue in that sin anymore then he will say bring that person to me and i will teach him no man in this world you can go to the sky and come back no man can live above sin that's what they say but thank god our eyes are open my eyes are open the lord will keep your eyes open in jesus name look at the danger and the damnation for religious blindness we're coming to isaiah chapter 56 isaiah chapter 56 i'm reading from verse 10 his watchmen are blind very clear his pastors are blind. His priests are blind. The evangelists that they rely on, they're blind. They are all, without exception, ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that they cannot bag. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs. It's talking about preachers. It's talking about pastors. He's talking about bishops. He's talking about watchmen. They are greedy dogs that can never have enough. They are shepherds, overseers, pastors that cannot understand. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The preacher will ask you, why is that in the Bible? Okay, it's a quotation from John Wesley. No, not at all. It's from the Bible. Where is it? You open it, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, and then you read it to them. I cannot understand that because I've been taking the Holy Communion for years. And you know, I'm still myself. I'm a communicant. I am this, I am that. And they still do not understand that the blood of Jesus Christ washes us and cleanses us from all sin that once we repent and turn away from our sin and believe on the lord jesus christ he forgives us he saves us he changes our lives it says they are shepherds that cannot understand they all look to their own way everyone for his own gain from his quarter look at verse 12 come ye say they i will fetch wine can you think of preachers who are drunk can you think of preachers who say the only problem they have is alcohol but then they turn around and they say anyway it's my flesh that drinks my spirit is saved it is my mouth that drinks but my spirit and my heart i am saved and there are people who claim that they are Christians. There are people who claim that they're children of God. Alcohol is their problem. Or it may be tobacco is their problem. And they say, you know, it is this my flesh. You know, it is this uh, habit. And I know I'm born again. I know I'm, I'm saved. Only that my flesh is my trouble. No, you are not born again. If any man is in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Let somebody say amen there. Somebody says he's born again. Somebody says he's a child of God, and fornication will not leave him, or he will not leave fornication. Somebody says I'm born again. Somebody says I'm a religious man. 
I'm even a preacher. Adultery will not leave him, will not leave her. Somebody says, I know the way of the Lord. I'm going the way of the Lord. And wine and alcohol and tobacco will not leave them. It says, we will feel ourselves a strong drink. And tomorrow shall be at this day much more abundant. That's the blindness. I pray the Lord will deliver everyone from such spiritual blindness in Jesus' name. If somebody is blind spiritually and is just going on and on in the spiritual blindness, if he dies in that condition, it will go to where blind people go. The people who do not know the way of salvation. And let's look at Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, and see what Jesus said to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees, to the hypocrites. There are many hypocritical people in religion, and they say to others, don't do this, and they themselves, they do that in the secret. They have no power to overcome what they are challenging other people and telling other people they should not do. They are hypocritical in their preaching hypocritical in their religion, hypocritical in their worship. Matthew chapter 23, and I'm reading from verse 16. Look at verse 16 here. It says, woe unto you, ye blind guides. Woe unto you, ye blind guides. Look at verse 17. Ye fools and blind. Ye fools and blind. Look at verse 19. Ye fools and blind. The Lord Jesus Christ was talking to the religious leaders of the land and was telling them, you are blind, you are blind, you are blind. Come to verse 24. Ye blind guides which strain at a knot and swallow a camel. And then it goes on to say in verse 25, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess, the blind Pharisee. Cleanse force that which is within the cup and the platter, and that the outside of them may be clean. Actually, what Jesus is saying is applicable to everyone that gives an outward expression of righteousness. I don't wear jewelry. I don't uh, put on lipsticks, and I don't uh, wear ring, and I don't have this and that. I don't have worldliness, but the heart is full of extortion. The heart is full of deception. The heart is full of darkness. The heart is full of immorality. The heart is full of corruption. That's what Jesus is saying. He said those people that are outwardly clean, but inwardly unclean, they are blind. In verse 28, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within a full of hypocrisy and iniquity. If iniquity is on the inside, but the outward is like, I'm one of you, don't you see me? Look at my appearance, and look at this, and look at that. It says such people are blind. What's the danger of that? Look at verse 15. In verse 15 of that same Matthew chapter 23, want to you scribes some Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. They do evangelism. They go to other people. They reach out to other people. It's like, I'm all right. Are you not going to be like me? It's like, I'm in the way. Why did you come in the way with me? It says the compass, sea, and land to make one convert, one disciple, one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him to fold child of hell than yourselves. Those people, they convert, and those people, they bring in into their church into our church, into their synagogue, into our sanctuary. Those people, they rely on outward things. Madam, 
Can you see, sister? Can you see my mother in the Lord? Can you see? I don't wear this again. I don't uh, paint this again. And madam, mother in the Lord said, you're all right. You're all right. And their hearts are not changed. And they are not converted. And they are not born again. And they are deceived to go on in their sin, in their depravity. They become to a full child of hell. Sir, pastor, brother, I don't smoke anymore. Sir, pastor, I don't do this anymore. And then I attend our deep and line Bible church now every time. Although the anger is still there, the fighting is still there, the violence is still there, the covetous is still there, the fornication is still there. You're coming to our church and you're regular now. Wonderful. That's good. You're on the way. No, it's not in the way. The heart must be born again. The life must be totally transformed. If you encourage them like that, they become two false children of hell than yourself. Look at verse 33. Verse 33, ye serpents and ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? How can you escape the damnation of hell? It comes, uh, we look at Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 19. Romans chapter 2, verse 19. The danger of that spiritual blindness and the damnation in that spiritual blindness. In Romans chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 19. It says in verse 19, it says, And art confident that thou art thyself a guide of the blind. They are confident that they are guided the blind. And if any of their church members will say, I want to go to this gospel church, I want to go to this Bible-believing church, they say, why? Those pastors in those what you call Bible-believing churches, have they gone to college? Have they gone to seminary? We have gone to college, we have gone to seminary, we know the Greek, we know the Hebrew, we know the history, and we know all the commentaries. We are the guide of the blind. I about their lives, I about their conduct, I about their behavior, I about their understanding, how about their worship, the worship of God, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind and a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth of the law. Thou therefore that teachest another, teachest thou not thyself, thou that preachest a man should not steal. Dost thou steal? You preach, a man should not steal. You know a man should not steal. Do you steal? Do you steal from your husband? Do you steal from your wife? Do you steal from your school? Do you steal from your college? Do you steal from the offering in the church? Born again, sanctified, feel what the Holy Ghost. Are you still a thief? Are you still a robber? In verse 22, thou that seest, a man should not commit adultery. Dost thou commit adultery? A man should not commit adultery. I give testimony. I'm born again. I give testimony. I'm a child of God. What are you doing with your marriage? What are you doing with those school girls that come to feel this form and that form or that you didn't listen for? What do you do with them? That that says a man should not commit adultery. Does thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, does thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law. Through the breaking of the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. The name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Uh, we watch uh, some people, we're Christians, we're Christians, we're born again, we're born again, we're higher, we're deeper, and we're children of God, saved and sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Wait until, you know, somebody dies in their family, and they're going to do the burial, and see all the things they do, that the unbelievers that come there will say, ah, ah, this is deeper life, a burial. 
I thought they said that deeper life is a Bible church. Even those of us that, uh, you know, go to churches, they say are not deeper, we're superficial, we are you know, we're nominal. We don't go as far as this. Wait until their children are getting married and wait for their reception and see the things happening there. And then people begin to say, What? I never knew that this is, you know, deeper. I just say about them, they're holy, holy, and they're righteous, and they don't touch unclean things, and they're not like the world. They separate themselves from the world. What? So this is how they do their marriage. The name of the Lord is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. That's the blindness. That's the blindness. And the Lord wants us to come out of that blindness. We will not remain in blindness in Jesus' name. I will not be in blindness. I will not be blind. Let's know where you stand. If you stand among the people that can see, take your stand. If you want to be among those who are blind, let us know where you are. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Uh, I lost my people there. You will serve the Lord in Jesus' name. And we're coming to Romans. Romans chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 7. Romans chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 7. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh from, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. A minority of them, some of them got saved on the day of Pentecost, some of them got saved in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, and some of them got saved as the apostles witnessed unto them, but the rest were blinded. They were blinded to salvation. They were blinded to the name of Jesus, the only name that saves. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, for I would not have you, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel. A nation that, uh, you know, all the writers of uh, the, all the authors of the books of the Old Testament, Israelites, coming from Moses unto Joshua, unto the judges, unto the Psalms, unto Malachi, they were all Israelites. And yet, although the authors of those books of the Bible were Israelites, blindness is come unto Israel. All the apostles that wrote from Matthew to Mark to Luke and John and Acts of the Apostles and Romans unto Revelation, they're all Israelites. And yet, even though God used their people People, their nationals to give us the whole Bible it says that blindness has come unto them unto the fullness of the Gentiles become in I pray we will not remain blind I said we will not remain blind what's the danger if somebody is blind let me show you an example or two in Exodus chapter 14 Exodus chapter 14. Look at it here from verse 5. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? The spiritual blindness. Moses came up. Let my people go. We're going to worship God. Who is that God? I don't know that God. He threw the rod down, and the rod became a serpent. The magicians threw their rods down. They became serpents, and the serpent of Moses and Aaron swallowed up all those serpents, and the man still will not see. And then the, the river, all the water in the land turned to blood. And the man will not see. And frogs covered the whole land. And the man will not see. And lies upon every animal and upon every man. And the man will not see. And hails of fire, heavy stones like bags of cement, fell upon animals and people. And the man will not see. Eventually, the firstborn of every family died. And when he looked at the children of Israel, all their children were spared. And now he said, I see. 
I see. I know God is talking. Go, leave the land and pray for me also. And they left. All those children of Israel left. Now the children of Israel were before the Red Sea. And so Pharaoh said, what came on us? Why did we leave those people? Why did we release them? That's blindness. And he took chariots and all the chariots of the land and himself. He said, I will, we're going to catch those people. Those people, we're going to bring them back. Pharaoh, have you forgotten what happened just a few nights ago? That all the firstborn in the land all died? I don't care. I'm going to pursue them. I'll bring them back. When people have seen miracle upon miracle, miracle of judgment, miracle of mercy, and yet they want to pursue evil, that's blindness. Look at verse 6, and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. And it says, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. That he says he wanted his heart to be hardened and he wanted to pursue. He said, okay, you want to go your way, you can go. And then it says, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, you know what happened? When Moses called upon the Lord, the Lord says, stretch your rod, and the sea will part for you. And the children of Israel passed through the sea. Instead of seeing, they have gone. I cannot catch them again. I cannot reach them again. He said, you pass through the sea. We will too. We have chariots, and we have the might, and we have the courage as a blind man. A person that will see danger like this and will see the Red Sea parted and will see the way and go into that Red Sea and at the end of it will be death and hell. That's blindness. I pray you'll not be blind. Whatever it is in your heart, you want to pursue, you want to pursue. Look at danger, you still pursue. Look at hell, you still pursue. Look at judgment, you still pursue. Look at the devastation that already came upon the land of Egypt and you still pursue that's blindness I pray you'll not be blind I will not be blind verse 19 and the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel removed and went behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them but it gave light by night to these that is to the children of Israel Israel, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea even all the chariots of Pharaoh and the all Pharaoh's sources and chariots and horsemen. Look at that, that's blindness. That's blindness already. He saw that the angel of God came in between them and there was darkness. And the children of Israel could have light and all the Egyptians had darkness. He said, don't worry, we will get them. Don't worry. Even if God is fighting, we're going to conquer. That's blindness. I pray you'll not be blind. That somebody is pursuing death, is pursuing hell, is pursuing perishing, and yet you will not give up. 
what other blindness are you looking for? In verse 24, and it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And he took up their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee. It's too late. There's a point somebody gets to, a point of no return. After God has won them, after God has brought judgment, after God has spoken to them, after God has sent his servant, and he said, this way of rejecting the word of the Lord will not work, and they still pursued. Now they reach the point of no return. Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, and upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. And there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel at that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians tell me dead upon the sea. It's one thing to die. It's another thing to face what happens after death, which is judgment, hell, fire. I pray that will not happen to us. I say that will not happen to you. But as you see the hand of God, as you see the judgment of God, at the time you have to repent, repent, and turn, so that iniquity will not be your ruin in Jesus' name. Point number one, the descriptions and the degrees of returning blindness. Number two, the danger and damnation for religious blindness. Number three now, our decision for deliverance from reversible blindness. Our decision for deliverance from reversible blindness. If the blindness is going to be reversed, we have to make up our minds. And it is not a temporary reversal. It's a permanent reversal. Lord, I know that's the way of the blind. That's the way of darkness, and that's the way that leads to eternal darkness, and I will not walk therein anymore. The Lord will answer your prayer. Look at Psalm 146, Psalm 146, and we're reading from verse 8. Psalm 146, we're reading from verse 8. It says, the Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous, the one who turns from unrighteousness to righteousness, the one who turns from sin to the Savior, the one who turns from darkness unto light, and the one who turns from gentle abomination to gospel message. That's the one, and the Lord has the power to open their eyes. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 8. 
open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I know the word of salvation is there. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold your wonderful salvation. I know the word for worship is there. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wonders of worship. I know your power is there in the word. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wonders of your power. I know eternal life is there. Such the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have everlasting life. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wonders of everlasting life in your word. And when God opens our eyes, we'll walk in the way of righteousness. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. And I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35, from verse 4. Say to them that of a fearful heart be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with a vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. And then it says in verse 5, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. You see that? It will come and save you. It will come and transform you. It will come and change your heart and change your mind and change your nature. Because it's the God who opens the eyes of the blind. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and an highway shall be there. A way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, no fools, no uneducated, no ignorant, shall not err, shall not go astray therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return up and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Amen. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 4. When the Lord came up, this is what he announced to the people. The word of God that came to him, that was given unto him, and in his rage, the thing that had been written concerning him, he opens the minds of people. He opens the hearts of people. He opens the eyes of people. He opens the intelligence of people. He opens the way before people. He's the Messiah. He is the Christ. And is the one that God has given to make the way open before us. And as we come to him, and we're not relying upon ourselves, and we come to him and depend upon him and call upon him, he'll open our eyes. He'll open our minds. He'll open everything within us and the fountain of the grace of God will flow and we will see clearly and the grace of God will be ours in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, the good news to the poor, the way of salvation, the word of salvation to the poor, the people that know they cannot pay for salvation, they don't have any money, they don't have resources to pay for salvation, but Christ paid it all, and he opens their understanding, and they have faith in God that through him and through him alone we can have a faith that gives us salvation he gives that goodness to us and then he says he has sent me to heal the broken hearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to those who are blind they are blind physically recovering of sight to them they are blind spiritually, the recovering of sight to them. They are blind religiously, the giving of sight unto them, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, 
and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. I pray to be fulfilled in your life. Darkness will vanish away. Ignorance will vanish away. And religious darkness, religious blindness will vanish away from every one of us in Jesus' name. He opens our eyes, then we're able to see, and we know this is the way, there's no other way. And this is the truth, there's no other truth. And this is the only means by which we can get to heaven. There's no other way, there's no other means. And then we hold on to that, we embrace that, we believe that. A change comes in our lives, and that change that comes in our lives makes us now to see every day the path we should walk in, and the way we should walk in, and the word we should hold on to, and the grace we should possess, and the power we should possess, so that we will have the strength, we'll have the courage, we'll have the backbone, we'll have the uncompromising nature to walk in that way that leads to heaven, and that heaven where we'll get there in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 16. Acts chapter 26, reading from verse 16, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of those things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send you. He will deliver us. I said he will deliver us. You know preachers too can be blind. You know soul winners too can be blind. You know walkers too can be blind. When God has said, I will deliver you from the people, from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. And then you are afraid to go out. You're afraid to evangelize. You're afraid to move in the street because, you know, I don't know what you do. Are you still blind? Can't you see what the Lord has promised? He has raised you up for a purpose and he has raised you up for a goal. And he says, this is the commission. He has put it in your hand. Everywhere you go preaching the gospel, he will deliver you. No harm will come upon you. No hurt will come upon you. If you don't take that, if you don't act on that, if you don't build on that, if you don't rise up and go and do what the Lord said, it means you are partially blind in that way. Every form of blindness, the Lord will take away from us in Jesus' name. Now, if Paul remained blind, how would he be able to open the eyes of the blind? If you remain blind, how can you open the eyes of the blind? Look at the purpose for which he was raised up, and look at the purpose for which you are raised up. Look at verse 18. Verse 18, tell me what you find in the first line there. If you know that is your ministry, that is your calling, that is your, that is your work, tell me aloud to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Power of Satan will never overcome you, will never come upon your life, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified, sanctified, sanctified by faith that is in me. We're coming to Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Thank God our eyes are open. Our minds are open. Our hearts are open. And the way is open before us in Jesus' name. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises he has given us already. All things that pertain to life, all things that pertain to godliness, we have eternal life. 
and we have godliness. And we can live a godly life in the dirtiest place on earth. We can live a virtuous and a righteous and a godly life in Jesus' name. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws. Look at this and beside this, give it all diligence. This how to keep your eyes open. This how to keep the eyes of your mind and the eyes of your heart and the eyes of your mind open re to remain open. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance uh, uh, patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren if those things remain in you and your eyes remain open, then you're not going to be barren. And it says, no profit in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 9. But, but he that lacketh these things, no faith, no virtue, no knowledge, no holiness, no righteousness, no diligence in pursuing Christian character. He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see a parallel and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. If we are going to remain sharp-sighted, it means that all the sins that we have confessed and forsaken none of them will come back. Depravity will not come back. Defilement will not come back. Sinfulness will not come back. And we're not going to remain lukewarm. We'll remain as zealous for the Lord in Jesus' name. I lost your amen there. Revelation chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 17. Revelation chapter 3, we're reading from verse 17. Because thou seest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, the people will say, what am I praying for? I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm deeper, I'm the personification of deeper life itself, and I have everything, I don't need any other thing, I've had all the messages I need to hear, I prayed all the prayers I need to pray. I have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. How do we overcome that kind of blindness, spiritual, religious blindness? It says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes salves, that thou mayest see as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. Light will come into him, and power will come into him, and the grace to open the eyes of his mind, of his heart, everything will come into him, and will suck with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to eat with me in my throne. And even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father, in his throne, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. We have ears to hear, he will open our eyes in Jesus' name. When he opens our eyes, he opens the scriptures unto us. Look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, let's read from verse 25. In Luke chapter 24, verse 25, 
Then said he unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And then he tells us in verse 45, then opened he their understanding. It will open your understanding. Anywhere you go in the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, in the Gospels, in the Epistles, anywhere, it will open your understanding. And it will open the scriptures unto you and what he has provided for you through his death on the cross of Calvary. You will have, you will possess in Jesus' name. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. I pray today a greater understanding will come to you. A higher understanding will come to you. And everywhere you read in the scriptures, it will be so open to you, you will see what Christ is, who Christ is, and what Christ can do in your life through those scriptures in Jesus' name. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 2. Acts 17, verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days received with them out of the scriptures. Look at this opening and alleging, opening and alleging, opening and confirming that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. As their eyes were opened, some of them believed and consulted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. That's what happens when our eyes are open, when our hearts are open, when our minds are open. When the veil is taken away, everything the Lord has provided at Calvary then becomes ours. Salvation becomes easy. Sanctification becomes easy. Holy Ghost baptism becomes easy. The grace, sufficient grace to live the Christian life, a victorious life, becomes available. And then the Christian life becomes something that you enjoy. And the Christian work and the Christian ministry becomes something you know, that you enjoy. I pray that opening of the eyes will be more and more, even today, tonight, in Jesus' name. It'll touch your heart. It'll touch your mind, it'll touch your life, and spiritually, it will open every closed door and every darkness, every form of darkness will vanish away and light from heaven will shine forth into your heart and into the scriptures for you in Jesus' name. And you can get more from the Lord tonight as your eyes are open. Let's rise up now and tell the Lord, Lord, I need more. Lord, I need more. You've opened the scriptures to me. I don't want to remain blind. I don't want to remain clouded. I don't want to remain in darkness. Open my eyes, Lord, as I call upon you now and let me know what I have in the Lord, what belongs to me. Open your mouth and open your heart and open everything within you unto the Lord. Is about to do something greater, more than you ever saw in your life.